Hey guys, so I wanted to share a story that I have shared a few times, but hopefully it can help some people, entrepreneurs today. A lot of people, including Edwin, uh, they don't really understand what it is to open a game store. It took me a little while to understand as well, but let me share your story. So in GP Houston, it wasn't uh, the last one because that one got canceled. It was two GP Houston's ago. I remember Underground C was at a hundred dollars buy list at the event, and that was a lot of money at the time. Uh, I think it was the first event that the Underground C or any of the dual lands hit a hundred dollars buy list. So it was quite a, it was quite some time ago, probably. I had to guess 2014, 2000, nope, probably 2015, something like that, maybe 10 years ago. Um, and I went to the vendors. I was trying to kind of, I was talking to vendors, figuring out which one. I, I eventually I sold a ton to Strike Zone online, uh, local to Houston. And I then I went the next day and sold them some more because they are a, they've done good business with me. They don't penny pinch and they round up. So I, I even for those little things, I think they are you know reputable. They are definitely reputable here in Houston. So um, talking to them, I'm like, okay, so how how much did you guys sell and stuff? And every single vendor I went to that day said it's not about selling. You know, I want to open a store too. Is it worth paying at that time five thousand dollars for one of these booths? Uh, how much do you sell? And every single vendor gave me the same response. We don't come to GPs or Magic Fest or whatever to sell. We come to buy. Right? And I thought that was kind of weird. I was like, wait, why do you come to buy? I'm going to turn a few pages so you guys can look at some good stuff. And why don't, like, I thought you came here to sell. And then, no, no, no. Our, our goal is we have $200,000 cash. Our goal is to buy as many cards as we can get. And then we sell when we get home. I always thought that was kind of weird. And the purpose of having a game store is the amount of people, all this stuff I bought from having a game store. Um, as you're going to see, there, the, this is the trade stuff. Um, the other stuff has been, some of the stuff has been sold. Some of the stuff is in a safe. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the sealed product I still have. Um, I have tons and tons of sealed, some of it from Alpha Investments himself. But we're talking about maybe 300k in sealed for Magic and another 500,000 in Pokemon. I went heavy in Pokemon celebrations and evolving skies and other sets, right? But um, the reason that you would have a store is you can get a low price for these items. So let me let me repeat this again in case like you guys are not understanding the purpose of having a store. In my opinion is you can massively have access to people who come to you willing to sell to you for buy list plus 10% store credit. And you will always, so the advantage of the store isn't cash flow. Your cash flow is always going to be shitty no matter how much you try. Um, so you're always pumping more money into the thing, not because like you're losing your assets. If you ever bankrupt, your assets will be liquidated. But the collection that you can obtain as a store is on a 100x scale as somebody who can obtain it as an individual. Because as an individual, you, you, these people don't come to individuals, they come to store. Some of my biggest purchases like the Ruby, the uh, Candelera, they don't come to a individual, right? Hey, or on Facebook, wherever these guys are, because it, they want to come to a physical store. Um, maybe you can get a Ruby at a garage sale. I cannot. Maybe you can get it on a Philly market. I cannot for a good price. Now, again, if you go to your local game store and they have a Ruby, they're gonna, it's going to be pretty close to retail unless like there might be a problem with it or whatever, maybe inking or something like that. But if you wanted a Black Lotus, a Black Lotus is just not going to come up to an individual, no matter what YouTuber he is or she is, right? They want to come and sell at a store. And even the online people, they don't want to send it to a home. They want to send it to a store address. So when they Google the address, it comes out, oh, this is a commercial property. And that's the whole thing about like business and the same with marketing, right? It's, it's the same idea when I have a marketing agency is we can do it from home,
but when we have a store, we just sold way, way more because if you think about it, that, that's a beautiful card that came in the store. If you think about it, these cards are not like, if you have these cards, you're gonna want a, a safe place to meet. You're probably gonna want to make sure that the store has enough cash. These individuals often do not have enough cash. And we're gonna flip through the land a little bit until we get to a blue. Ah, oh, there, there's a blue. Like you're, you're not going to see a page of Tundras just walk up, oh, hey, I have, you're gonna see one or two, but they're again going to the store to sell. So I always did think that this was an investment opportunity that magic cards at one time, I thought, especially this type of level. And even now I've been wrong. I've been admitted, Lee, I've been wrong about seal product. Uh, seal product has sucked and there is nothing else I can say about that uh, from an investment standpoint. I wore the spark was 150, 160. I was buying at 130. Now it's like 100, 105 on TCG player, Dominaria, Modern Horizon. You can take the whole list of products and they're exactly the same. Uh, none of the products recently have really gone up a lot in price. Uh, maybe Fallout Collector's Edition, Lord of the Ring Collector's Edition. But compared, so when I mean magic products, I don't mean Universe Beyond. Universe Beyond is obviously doing really well at this moment. But um, if you really wanted to like get like 400 dual lands, there's no way a, a single human being can do it without actually being a company, like a corporation. And that was kind of where I am with, um, you know, like that's a whole page of underground seas that you see right here. If you want 40, 50, 60 underground seas, you have to open a store. And uh, the other issue with the Pokemon thing, uh, interesting enough, you know, I bought a lot of sealed Pokemon from customers, but I didn't really buy that many singles. So like, if you look at my magic collection, it's much more larger than my Pokemon collection because I didn't really believe in these things. It was my fault, right? I, again, you're not right every time. Um, you know, you're wrong most of the time when you're quote investing in this product. You know, I've been wrong most of the time, even in magic, which has done really, really well for me. Half the investment, had I, had I just not put the money into sealed, I would have been so happy. I would have been so happy. I just put it again into dual lands I mean, it would be true to moon right now, but right now it's, you know, I'm probably made a little bit or close to break even um, because of how bad the seal product have really done. They have done, you know, they've been pretty, pretty awful seal product, to be honest with you. And they kept reprinting the things over and over again, which is fine. Uh, but if you wanted to pick up dual lands, power nine, I think it's very difficult to, as an individual on volume, but when you have a store, I mean, that stuff just comes to you. Now you're going to get a lot of junk and sometimes you buy the junk. I remember I had at one point 16 gold span dragons because everyone was trying to dump them on me and I had to buy list because my buy list is the same as any buy list online plus 10% store credit. So that's kind of what it is. You know, I've always offered the store credit. Uh, there's a beautiful island, a uh, tropical island. So anyway, that's kind of my spiel about like being a collector like to do it next level like you do need to own a store now will you make a shit ton of money no will it would be very depressing running a store yes and a lot of people would think that like oh my store is a failure because it closed down it just closed until i have more time but my collection continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger um i closed the store because i think my collection is already too big so we're, we're just doing eBay, we're buying 500, I think it was 400, 500, $600 of eBay cards a week. And uh, we're having fun doing that because it's auctions, right? Anyway, guys.